Hello everyone and welcome to Summer Games Story of the Time. Um, my name is Joachim, as usual, and today we will be continuing the uh, top 50 of the uh, Kickstarter projects, uh, my favorite ones, obviously. And today we'll be doing uh, 30 to 21. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? Number 30 is Odyssey. So, en well, basically Enchanters Odyssey. You see here the Kickstarter, uh, Odyssey plus reprint. So basically the Od Odyssey introduced a uh, big box that uh, collects all of Enchanters, which is why I wanted it. Also, very quick jump to the next, to the same one, East Quest is another one that I backed back then, which basically adds more of the same, but then in an Eastern world, right, as you can see. So what is Enchanters exactly? Basically, it's your typical deck builder, but I mean, it reminds me a lot, as you can see in this picture, of uh, the Legendary games, Marvel Legendary, um, and the other ones that you have. You have some with Firefly, you have another one with Predator, and so on. So, basically you have this row of um, items or uh, enemies that will pass by, that you can either acquire or fight, and so on. Um, you have a big bad that you have to try to defeat. You have a location that you can also go to and help. Uh, you're trying to collect shards and other stuff and so on. But what makes this game cool is uh, these things right here. These, the artifacts that you do, that you collect. So, for example, you start with the Wood Elf Banner of Cultists. But then whatever you get, well, in this case, but whatever you uh, acquire later on, it might change. For example, it becomes an Anchor of Cultists, or an Anchor of a Horse, or a Great Club of Flying, or an Anchor of Charisma, and so on. But then also the synthesis you can uh, complete. For example, you can lend a hand with a club that makes you fall upwards. Or that whitens your teeth and makes them sparkle. But there's so many different cards that you can mix and match. Sometimes it is actually hilarious. So that's something that I really like about this game. Plus, you have so many different ones, different decks, races and classes decks, as you can see where, here, that you, where you can mix and match them together, right? But then also kingdom decks. In this case, there's six, but that's what's been added because basically there were already a lot of them in there. Then the, the, the location cards, um, uh, villages, and also overlords, which are the big bad guys that you're fighting. Uh, let's see what was in here. Probably more of the same. Uh, so your east, uh, more kingdom decks uh, that, that they've added. So craft. So basically, shuffle and play. You will you select certain decks that will be in your game, the kingdoms. Then they will become uh, the, the journey, right? You will craft artifacts to get stronger and fight the enemies, and in the end become hero of the village. Village is spelled wrong here. That's sad. Okay. Anyway, so at least here it's correct. So new villages, new options, uh, new equipments. You can see here drill of rubber. So once again, they go together. You have like a sword here and a shield. So as you're getting more stuff, you'll put them on top of each other and you'll become stronger because you'll be adding everything up. But the stuff on the top here, that will be covered up. And also some of them have an ability, as you can see, that will also be covered up as you acquire new items. So that's always stuff you have to... Uh, yeah, keep in mind, and then you have here kill the monsters, defeat the overlord. So you see the, the overlord here is Dogon, the Sharkon of six seas. You can see his values here. And then here, the uh, basically the, the typical monsters, two and five, uh, two health, five attack. So you want to defeat them. They give you points. A, these are the victory points. There's the one at the bottom and so on. So yeah, basically a fancy version of Marvel Legendary, but then with a lot of original twists to it. Really love this game because of the variety, you know. Okay, and now why is it so low then, only on 30? Because I don't play it enough. And uh, I don't think the the solo mode was okay. We actually just play it more, to be honest. Ah, yes, the big box, the deluxe box, was really bad. So I should just get an insert or something. Okay, that was Odyssey. Um, well, not Odyssey, that was um, Enchanter's Odyssey. Yeah. There we go. Then number 29 is Gugong, uh, the Panjun Deluxe Expansion. So basically the deluxe big box that you see here. Um, I already liked Gugong back in the day. And then they came out with this deluxe version and I really wanted it. 
Short story, I got it delivered in Belgium, but then COVID happened um, and then they had to ship it to me anyway. So I actually paid more than most people. <laughs> I paid shipping to Belgium and then shipping to uh, Hong Kong. So what is cool about this is a worker placement game, but you can see these red cards over uh, everywhere, right? So these red cards are gifts, uh, gifts to the emperor. So if you want to go to these locations where you can do actions and acquire things or bonuses and points, the typical worker placement stuff, right? If you want to do it, your gift has to be a higher value of what's already there. If there's a three there, then you can add a four or a five or whatever, and then you take the three and put it in your hand. Here's some more examples here, two, four, nine, six, seven, eight. Although that's more from the expansion stuff. Um, also more expansions here, here, stuff at the bottom. Also what is original is in the middle of the game here, you have the, the temple, and you have to reach the top of the temple, otherwise you don't score. If you don't reach the top of the temple at the end of the game, you don't win, you cannot win, you won't even score. You'll just basically eliminate it, all right? So there's also always a push to get that. Also the cards, as you're playing one card, you'll be picking up the other. So at the end of the game, end of the round, you'll have a certain amount of cards still in your hand. They have these dice here at the, at the top here, these three blue dice. They, if your uh, cards match the dice, you'll get bonuses as well, uh, victory points and so on. I remember playing this the first time, doing playing horribly. But in the second time, I immediately tripled my score. So it definitely takes a while. Have I played the expansion yet? No. But uh, I haven't played solo either. But always fun with other people. And you can see it's also very beautiful. So a typical worker placement game uh, point salad because you can get points everywhere the top uh, section is travel um, here you have the great wall that you're building here you're trying to get jade here there you get uh, end game and bonus uh, actions here you are uh, is it intrigue if i'm not mistaken going up the track because then you can spend that to get other stuff you can see the four stuff here here you are uh, going down the river with your boat where you can get a double worker uh, it's just two guys stuck together that give you double rewards and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, basically very typical worker placement game, but very nice, very beautiful, and very cool. Okay, so that's Kugong. Then 28, we have Masters of Wills, uh, Master of Wills Waterborne. Now you can play Master of Wills uh, on an app as well for free. Uh, of course, you can pay money to to unlock more decks and so on. So if you want to try this out, just download it and play it. Okay. Now, this is kind of a tricky game because this is expensive for what it is, to be honest. But I like the theme. I like the card play. You know, they, these are all the different factions you have. Waterborne was a new one that was introduced. But the main game is Master of Wills. You also have Alpha Guard, Razor Core, Dawnlight, Shadow Cell, Cloud Echo, Edge Hunter, and Blood Crown. Now, I only have Waterborne, Alpha Guard, Razor Core, uh, and uh, Dawnlight, I think. So I only have four of them. So... Let's uh, have a picture of the actual game. Is it, do you have a picture of the actual game where it's in progress because it just shows what you can buy? But uh, no, zero pictures of the game in progress. That is kind of uh, bad. So let me just quickly uh, go to uh, BGG. Okay, here we are at BGG where we have a uh, image, a picture of the actual game. So what happens in the game? In the beginning at your turn, sorry, your turn, there will be a certain amount of cards in the middle of the uh, board. Let's say the left section is you, the right section is your opponent. Now, as you, as it is your turn, you're going to choose a card to play. Now, first of all, you have the values 2, 11, 7, 4, and minus 2. Those are points. Now, those points they will only be counted at the end of the game, right? So now these cards will be moving around. So for example, let's take uh, the, the top one here. Um, I can't really read where it would end up. Normally it would end up either in recruits or uh, loyalists or here at the end, which I've forgotten the name of. So if it's at the last column, it will get stuck and it will be scored for sure. So in this case, this player has minus five, seven, so two points, seven points at the end of the game. This player already has 22 for sure at the end of the game. You're going to be choosing one. So let's take uh, the, the black two, right? So it'll go to your side, either recruits or loyalists. I can't really determine here uh, which way it goes, but normally when you see the card, you'll know. But then the cool part about this, it says it says orange minus one. That means one of the orange cards will go towards your opponent. It'll go away from you. So. I say cool, but in this case it's bad because the five I will either go 
uh, one column to the right, or the 11 will go one column to the right. And there's black minus one, and also purple minus one. So that's how it. That's how you play. You choose one card, move it to your side or the other side if it's a minus. So if you were, were to choose blue, it'd be minus two. It will go to here, and then be uh, be blue uh, plus two, I think, and then plus two gray and plus one orange. So those cards are going to be moving around the whole time. And some of these cards also have a helmet, like this orange one has a helmet. If you have the helmet, you get to play one of your special cards that will then be put at the bottom somewhere or an instant action that can change the whole flow of the game. So every round you're basically calculating what the score are and you're trying to influence stuff, trying to move cards away, trying to kill cards because you can kill cards as well in the afterlife and then they might come back into the game with other cards, special cards. So they keep moving left and right. Uh, every faction plays very differently. There are a lot of uh, community cards. So there's this big stack. They're the ones that come out. It can be just four cards on your turn. It can be like eight cards of your turn to choose from. It is uh, pretty wild. I feel so um, yeah I like this game and maybe I should try to make a video about it to show you more how it works although this playing playing this solo is pretty impossible you need to have someone to play it with you can see here recruits loyalists and allies yeah those are the names uh, of the cards uh, yeah where they go to also all these cards have specific um, uh types like some are religion some are uh, military some are they all have different things uh journalists as well i think there's a bunch of them although it says here uh solo so maybe i should give it a try it should be there eh, good to know all right so that's master of wills let's continue with number 27 right that is uh winterborn so once again born but this time it's winterborn so winterborn when you go uh, of the looks i mean i think it looks kind of cool but basically you're vikings right you're a viking tribe and you uh you can see it winterborn clan sorry not a tribe you're a clan uh house sarah house sangaran house kogula and house morteria so um it is kind of asymmetric as in you do get a card in the beginning that gives you some special powers is there somewhere a picture of just a game no, it looks like I'm going to have to go back to BGG. Okay, so we're at BGG now. This is what the setup looks like. You have your house here, House Sierra. Uh, your special power is this card here that we can't really read, but that's okay. And this board is basically where all the magic happens. Okay, so as you're going to be going around, you have three people that you're moving around. You have your warrior, you have your uh, ship, and then you have your shaman, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to be moving around, okay? And they can only move on the dark gray spaces, all right? So the warrior, he's always going to try to pillage. And when you pillage, you take one of the uh, pillage icons at the bottom that will give you certain actions or extra bonuses that you'll put on top of your board. If you have the shaman, however, he is going to try to trade and that will get you the cards that you see there okay and then when you do the ship he's going to uh explore and those are going to get you the uh the, the, the tiles that you see there that you can place also with the um warrior later on you can actually take some other stuff as well depending on what you spend you can see here the three things what they can do the three units right but on your turn you're going to be moving around now one thing that i cannot show you well because it don't sh doesn't show here is in your hand you have a bunch of cards they're here but they're face down and you'll be combining them if you combine it with the banner card which you have to do you always have to combine two cards it says here at the bottom your ship will move and here uh, the second one it says one to three so you either choose to move one two or three or if you don't want to move the ship or you don't want to move this you can just use it to get one shield which is a resource right so that's how you use your cards when you move you use two cards or you can play one card just to get a resource and once you've used all your cards a um, new cards are drawn from your deck and slowly uh, the seasons will continue until the game ends so you're trying to get all this stuff right you're trying to explore you're trying to pillage you're trying to trade uh, at the same time uh, trying to get buildings on your board trying to put tiles on your board getting more bonuses getting more items um, I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of explaining how the game exactly works, but 
yeah, that's basically um, it. It says, based on card collection, expanding, settling, and trading with allies, each path provides a rich and enjoyable play, which I agree with. Okay, let's see if I can show you one more other picture that shows you, for example, this is more late game uh, with a lot of buildings and you can see they always jump around, okay? And then uh, is there anything else that looks interesting? This is another uh, one of those. I think, I think I've spoken enough about this one. Yeah, so that is um, Winterborn. Next up, uh, number 26, we have Cosmic Colonies. This game I especially like because you are actually, it's another uh, worker, well, worker placement game, not really, but it is a, uh, you're trying to collect resources and then trying to build stuff uh, with polyominoes and uh, trying to uh, co cover your land because you're on a, on, is it on the moon? Where are you? On a planet. I don't know which planet it is, but you're drafting cards as well. So basically, let's just go over how to play. First of all, everybody has two cards in their hand, you ch uh, or no, four cards in their hand. You choose one to play, all right? That card has a number, so that will decide who goes first. Then you either gather the resources that's on the card, or you build buildings, right? Then the or you know, the two, this happens twice, and then the two cards that you've used will go to the next player. So you know which two of their four cards. And then, so you can always think like, what are they using, what are not? And it's the same set of cards that keep going around the table until the end of the game, right? Uh, also, the get cards have, these are the simple cards. You also have the more advanced cards that have day and night. Um, so once again, you leverage your worker abilities, but also the number when they go first. Build your objectives. Uh, so all these polyominoes. You can also see when you take this piece, it's no longer available for other people. So then you have to wait for the next round to hopefully get it. So player order is important if you want to get certain things. Um, you cover terrain because it gives you a specific uh, amount of points. Yeah, this game I really like just because of the drafting. You're giving your, you're using units, uh, these people, but then you're passing them on to the next player. And eventually they'll probably come back to you, but you know how powerful they are. So when you use it, it's very important. Um, and you can see it looks nice as well. Polyominoes are cool. The little resource tokens are nice. So yeah, you can see here, standard worker cards. And then these are the advanced ones that have night phase as well. When you have night phase, for the first one, you use the day phase. The second one, you use the night phase and stuff like that. All right, and then you also have uh, objective cards, which are very simple, you know. If you have certain amounts of tiles like this, then you get points, and so on, so on, so on. All right, so that is Cosmic Colonies. I'm not going to talk too much more about that one. Then 25 is Yidu. Now, the Deluxe Master Set. Now, I guess normally you would say, why is this not higher? Because it's an awesome game. It is an awesome game, but there's two reasons why it's not higher. First of all, the main reason is that it's it's so big it doesn't fit on my table <laughs> it's very difficult although maybe the solo version might fit but i have the mat and the mat is really huge so i need to have a special table which is on the rooftop so i can only play outside basically but the second one and that really really uh pee, pissed me off so i really got annoyed by it but look, look how beautiful it is you know, the, the, these boards and everything and i have all the mats as well right it really annoyed me because um they they said afterwards right after the uh campaign finished they said oh we made some mistakes on the cards here's a print and play print it and change your cards which is already like why don't you just send us replacement cards because that's normally what you're supposed to do because the mistake was with them right but then they did a new campaign for all those people who were complaining, I didn't get a copy, I want a copy, with the changes in there already and an expansion. And people with the original campaign were like, what? After they promised there would be nothing new. They broke their word, added new stuff, and they said, oh, but you, you guys can all just order the expansion in the summer when it becomes available for everyone. Like I didn't order the expansion, I also because when they said when you order the expansion, you also get replacement cards for the previous ones. I'm like what? So that really turned me off on the game. Anyway, how do you play Yido? Yido, aside from being super beautiful and super cool to play, first of all, there's an auction where you're bidding for certain actions. Then you're gonna send your disciples into the city, 
uh, to use all these uh, unique actions. But there's also City Watch, so you have to make sure your, your disciples are not in the same area as a City Watch or they'll get arrested. Um, you can also send to your clan board to activate districts, and then you're trying to complete all these missions that can also have consequences. Also, you can actually change the direction the, the city watch goes or make the move or not move so actually trap your opponents also when you start the game you have different decks so you can choose what kind of cards uh, missions will be in the game which is also really really cool there's a lot of var var variability in there so you can see it just looks really really pretty all these uh, acrylic tiles and so on once again determine the length of the game uh, uh, I was kind of decks, mission decks you use and so on. It is a really good game, but then the people behind the game, yeah, they really, uh, phew, yeah, did not make me very happy. Hmm. All right, next up is Steampunk Rally Fusion. All right, I liked Steampunk Rally as a lot, and I only played Fusion recently for the first time. And Fusion adds some special dice, but if you don't know what Steampunk Rally is, it's basically a uh, um, a uh, rally game but steampunk so what happens you start with a basic two card set uh, of a famous inventor and there are a ton of inventors and then you draft so you have four cards you choose one you either take a piece that you will attach to your um, machine or you'll choose uh, some other cards or you'll throw a card away to gain cogs or dice that you can then use to power your machine then there's also venting. So the way you power your machine is you put dice on your machine and you do the action. But then they're stuck. Every round they'll be they go down automatically by one. But then you can spend cogs to vent faster and get them out of the way. So you can put a new dice and activate them again because they don't activate every round. You have to put a new die in there. Uh, and of course you race, you move forward. But as you move forward. It might be bad terrain, you might damage your machine, or the part you're using might explode. So your machine can go from really big to really small. Like last time I played, my machine had like 11 cards, and I finished with 3 cards. Because I boosted so much, it was like f parts flying off everywhere. So it's pretty cool the way it is. It looks very beautiful. Uh, Fusion adds more dice, more cards, more... Um, inventors and you can see here click to make it larger it is very beautiful as well like this machine is actually now completely closed oh no no it's not alan turing here at the top you still have a gap but on your turn you can actually move everything around as well it is not set which is also cool okay so uh like i said a lot of people it looks very nice Di four different tracks as well and uh, yeah it is, if this sounds like something like your jam, check it out. Different types of dice as well who do different types of stuff. There's projects that are secret that can also give you boosts, event cards if you want to add it. Overcharge, which as you can see, destroys certain parts of your um, machine, but then you go faster, obviously. So yeah, it's very strategic as well. Seeing what they're doing, you might, might force you to do more and so on. Anyway, that is Steampunk Rally. 23 is Mission Catastrophe. Now, there are videos on uh, the channel. There is a playthrough. There is an unboxing. Uh, there's a reboxing. There's a lot of it. But why do I like this game? I sold The Captain is Dead because of this game. So Mission Catastrophe basically is you're all on a ship. So good news, you're alive. Bad news, the asteroids uh, exploded into many meteoroids who are coming to your ship right and worst news is that you can you will not survive it okay you have to work together but then there's one thing there's only one escape pod so you're all working together but only one person can escape so you're trying to keep the ship alive and also trying to be the one who leaves so it's pretty cool it gives a cool dynamic there's also solo mode which is nice it looks very pretty as well. It plays very, it's very easy to play, very simple, because every time you roll to see what a damage happens, you walk around the ship, you use cards to, uh, either collecting cards or repairing or using your special abilities, because you see all these units, right? All these guys, they, they're just the guys, that's it. 
nothing too special about them. But then you have to choose uh, what occupation they have. What is their job? Could be a botanist, you know, could be a captain, a first mate, a pilot, an engineer, a red shirt, a stowaway, a cruise director, all those kind of things. They add different things to everything. Uh, different play modes as well. You can hear in this case, it's close to exploding. You need to have certain cards to survive. You're moving around. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's, it's fun. Like I said, different modes, Soul Survivor, um, team play, solo cooperative. So uh, check it out if, this, if, this, if you like this, because it's cool. I really, really like it. Um, okay, Mission Catastrophe, that is 23. 22 is In Too Deep, another one that I have a lot of videos on uh, on the channel. Um, also unboxing, I don't think a reboxing, but just unboxing and some playthroughs as well, solo and with other people. And basically, in a nutshell, um, you are controlling uh, criminals uh, to do your bidding. And you are trying to, it says crack the case before the case cracks you, cracks you. But there's not a lot of theme here. You're just trying to uh, solve the puzzle. So on your turn, you're going to have some missions you're trying to accomplish. And by accomplish, you can accomplish this by basically taking over these guys that you see, right? and moving them around, have, make, making them do their special actions in the city. Is there a picture of the main board or something? Dun, 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 dun. You can see here, the miniatures look nice. They all have their specific uh, bases, uh, so you can recognize them. There's a sentinel who is like an expansion, who uh, walks around and has uh, effects as well. And uh, there's some uh, storylines that you're following, but let me show me, show me the way. Um, bum, 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 bum. I guess here's where they explain how to play. Yeah, so basically you're trying to find out uh, what the plan is of the criminals in general, the syndicate, and you're trying to stop it. But it game could end that they actually succeed. So you need to find out what the evidence is here. So you can do that by uh, completing uh, missions and then you can flip, uh, put evidence there and try to complete all of the stuff. If you have the most evidence there, you'll also get bonuses and so on. You can see it here, uh, the chapter, try to get all the stuff, get the evidence there. And then you're, try you're also going to move these guys around, increase your grip. So if your grip for these specific people, if they're here in the dark area, all you can do is move them. If they're in the gray area, then you can start using their special abilities when you move them. And if they're in the bright area, then you can actually use extra turns with them, but then it'll always go back uh, one or two spots, depending on what you're doing. Um, so yeah, everybody's just using these guys, moving around to different parts of the city, doing different actions. Different parts of the city also have different actions you can do. So you can see here, there's actions in the city. There's actions that the people can, the, the criminals can do. You're going to be collecting evidence. You're going to be completing side missions. You're going to be completing, completing story missions. So it is just a really cool um, game in general. For example, here, C1 hack the lifts. So you can complete it. It says here, you must be in the towers holding the crack box and then you drop it. Okay, cool. But then you have an option. Are you going to do it the right way and be the goody goody two shoes, breach one tower? Or are you going to be like the hardcore guy who doesn't care about the consequences? Take down the grid. So you're going to get more stuff, but you're going to get more red cards. And these red cards are corruption. And corruption could potentially give you a lot of negative points in the game, depending on how it pans out. Okay, I once had minus 28. <laughs> yeah. Basically, when you have the most corruption, it's minus. If you don't have the most, it doesn't count. So I had the most. All right, so yeah, all that together uh, is a really, really cool game. Check the videos if you're interested. That was Into Deep 21 is Too Many Bones. Now, um, we have here uh, Splice and Dice, which is not the last one that I backed, but the last one that I received. I also backed Unbreakable, but that hasn't arrived yet. And with Unbreakable, I will have everything that I want of it. My, uh, my trove chest, which you see here, which is a storage solution for the whole game and which is awesome, is full. My plan is to make a video about it to show all the stuff that's in there and how amazing it really is. But yeah, so that one's in there. Um, actually, can I go down? Yeah, here. So you can see it. you actually have to use a magnet to pull it out. Okay, Kallax friendly because it fits in there. Oh, it's all these different cool trays for all the stuff that you need. Yeah, so very, very, very nice. Anyway, 
So what is too many bones? Basically, you choose one, two, three, four characters and you're going on a trip uh, where a certain X amount of days trip where you'll be fighting enemies until you finally uh, fight a big baddie at the end. And, and that's basically what it's, what it's like. But um, I think it might not have the typical um, picture here because this is just a specific expansion that actually does a lot of stuff differently. So let's go to BGG. So here you have a good picture of somebody who's actually has, who actually has a really nice setup. So here at the top, they have the adventure map. So you're starting at the, the bottom and you're trying to get to the boss at the end. And this little tracker here shows the days. Um, there's also events and loot that might come out. Um, here at the bottom, these two are the units that they have. And when you are going to reveal the first day or second day or third day, depending on whatever happens, and enemies appear, they will come here on these uh, colored X's, depending uh, whether they're melee or ranged, might be different, because you can see the swords and the bows. And then we will place our guys either on the bows, if they're ranged, or melee, if they're melee. And then we'll be checking the... Uh, uh, the turn order, uh, initiative order, and they will be fighting. You can see here the numbers there, their starting uh, abilities. You have attack, you have defense, you have the amount of dice, special dice that you can use as well. And after battles, you get XP, and then you'll be able to unlock all these skills you see here. The skills are also explained here alongside what the dice do and so on. So it takes some research in the beginning of the game, getting to know your character, but here you can't really tell but here they also give you the difficulty and so on so you can always start with someone easy and then uh, level up later on what is also cool is your character is a stack and the red discs are your health so as you're moving around and fighting they will decline the same will happen to the enemies uh, who will also come out so very beautiful game very cool to do it it's also often very funny has special uh, stories and so on definitely worth uh, worth it now many people would be like huh why is this on 21 it should be a top three or top five once again i haven't played it enough i've been mostly collecting it <laughs> now because my trophy chest is now full um so yeah i should definitely get it back to the table especially solo so that is uh too many bones let's continue no, no let's not continue is it is it from 30 to 21 right yeah and that's it that's all uh, we have for today um well for today for this video from 30 to 21 i uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, the others will be following as well sometimes there's a bit of a gap that could be for a multitude of reasons uh, i'm just too busy you know but uh, it will we will get to number one don't worry about it so let me know what you think of all the games that i've talked about are there some that you ha didn't hear about or haven't heard about before are you interested or how do you feel about it like oh no it should be higher or why is it so high whatever okay feel free to give your opinion if you want to see videos of certain ones also do tell me and then i'll do my best to make them all right this is it that was joachim this was so many games so little time have an amazing day bye bye